was awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> Very exciting. I don't know why I get like freakishly squeamish when people show pictures of missing toes. I get very uncomfortable. So uh, bear with me right now as I try to stabilize myself. Um, to, that was, to Jordan, that was, that, was, that was super fun. Thank you so much. Right now we're gonna introduce uh, Scott Schiller from NBC and Michael Solomon from OMD. And uh, these guys are gonna have a table discussion about creating a better digital video marketplace. Welcome. Hey. Good to see you. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Let's take a look at the first slide, please. <laughs> so um, Michael and I have spent uh, a decent amount of time over the last three weeks trying to um, create the format for a conversation uh, about digital video. We all know that um, it's a hot topic. There's lots going on um, that speaks to the, the, the marketing and media environment out there. Uh, so we hope the discussion today will be inspiring yet ground us for, um, you know, the reality of what this is, which is a highly fragmented market that's evolving quicker than any of our systems or people uh, have been able to, to, um, uh, to handle initially. So um, what we're going to do is uh, give you some thoughts on key topics in the industry that we have gleaned over the past uh, years and particularly the last few weeks. Um, we're gonna have a 20-minute um, table conversation where the tables are gonna be assigned one of four questions, which we will tee up at the end of this initial presentation. Then we'll regroup and each table will make a one-minute presentation of just the key thinking. And then what we're gonna do is Videonomics is gonna take all those thoughts and send them back out to you after the conference so you have a structure to, to think about as we all go back to, to work later in the week. Next slide. So uh, we're, I'm, I'm not a big quote guy, but I, I think the, uh, the conversation and what we've been discussing the last uh, couple days is, 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 really, um, is, is really interesting. And I think uh, what it's doing is it's really surfaced, I think, a lot of the, the initial conversations uh, Scott and I have been having, and I think you know, when I think of of of, of, a, of a quote or what really the theme of what we're what we're talking about and what we're trying to do is is really continue to push forward. Um, and we're not, you know, clearly we're not we're not flying yet, but I think the idea is as long as we kind of keep moving and keep kind of pushing this conversation along, things are things are only gonna only gonna improve and we're only gonna get better. So, next slide. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, just a couple thoughts. Um, just thinking about the year. Uh, digital video and and the upfronts. Um, certainly more digital video got bought and sold, but how can we do it better? Um, is there one right answer? Um, one thing that is certain is that this past year was an experience for, for everyone and uh, was a much more involved process from the agencies and the range of sellers out there. Um, broadcast and cable have created efficiency in process and flexibility for advertisers, um, but there's a whole range of video propositions out there beyond that, and agencies are still wrestling with the process. So these are the major uh, thoughts and, and themes that we've observed. Next slide, please. So uh, I think this came up a little bit this morning when, when uh, Sean and, and, and some of the, the conversation was happening around uh, the, the round table that happened yesterday and some of the conversation that uh, they had this morning. Um, I do think we are dealing with some of this historical, uh, these historical perceptions of which, you know, buyers are, are uh, fundamentally within agencies, a, a fairly young crew that um, are spending a lot of our, our clients' dollars. Um, and sellers obviously have, a, have a, um, a, a perception, I think, within the agencies that we're, we're still fighting with, which is um, really, really, um, it's all about the dollars and it's all about bringing it. Um, bringing money in the upfront to basically do business in, in that in that fashion. So, we're dealing with this, and what we're what we're doing. And next slide, is uh, we realized we had some biases, um, and this is um, uh, through a couple of conversations that we've had and, and some of the things that we've been doing. We said, let's actually let's let's talk to the people. Let's let's do a little bit of 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 of, uh, of a of a survey or a little bit of research, um, asking some sellers and buyers. Um, sellers mainly from, you know, we wanted to, to really run the, run the gamut, speak to, you know, video networks, broadcast partners, content creators, sports properties, um, and then also buyers because, you know, clearly 
Um, I'm, I'm attached to the McDonald's business and you know, really only represent one, um, one agency. We want to kind of spread that out a little bit and talk to a couple agencies that represent both big and small brands um, and really just ask them four topics. Um, so it's around the video marketplace, it's around premium content, um, what they thought of the upfront and the new front, and, uh, and what are they thinking about measurement and data. Next slide. And what we wanted to see, um, knowing there's, there's a ton of confusion, and I think that the, a lot of that's been raised over the last couple days, uh, but we really want to get around what's the, what's the true sentiment. So there's the whole idea of if we are um, you know, being positive and working together on something, we're probably going to come to solutions. Uh, so we really wanted to, to gauge where that sentiment is, um, look for areas of agreement, and maybe start there and start to build from that. And then just to see if there's anything shocking, if there's some new perspective, something that we hadn't thought about, um, and, 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 and really try to bring some of that stuff up to the surface. Next slide. So you can see here, this is a visual representation of the words that were used in the responses that um, were solicited by us from the perceptions of buyers and sellers. And what this supports is that what we all know, which is the world is highly fragmented, there's lots of different paths, there's lots of different ecosystems, and uh, uh, you know, everyone is grappling with how do I fit into the new world. Next slide. So what we've done is we've taken the four topics and, and what we'll do is we'll go through each of the four topics and just give you some of the, the main thoughts to set up the conversation, then we'll hit you with the, the four questions. So the first one is the video marketplace. And what we've observed is that um, depending on where you sit, you obviously have a different point of view. Um, it's crowded, it's confusing, it's fragmented, um, it's, it's exciting. Uh, if you're a buyer, because there's a lot of options out there, but if you're a seller, the world has changed. Uh, and um, you know, someone observed, do we think our clients will fra find fragmentation exciting and interesting, or will it be difficult? Yeah, I thought I thought this was a great a, a great part of the way to kind of kick off the um, the conversation. I think this was this was really compelling. I think we um, when we talked about looking for those pieces or those those elements where there was some excitement or there was some buzz. I think we really overall, I think it's a really it's a really good thing that everyone's really excited about where we're headed and, and where we're pushing forward. And we clearly have some questions to answer here, but I do think fundamentally where we're, where we're at and, and, and the sentiment that, that's, that's sitting with a lot of the, the buyers and sellers is obviously really, really positive, which I, we, we think is a great thing. So let's look at the next one, and it's the area of premium content. And we believe that we observe that premium is in the, the eye of the beholder, um, and everyone, I think, thinks this is this is a good thing. You hear from the sellers that not all impressions are created equal, and you hear from the buyers that there's different places to reach audiences. Uh, but this needs definition. This year, I think we saw a lot of focus on what is termed premium, although it may have been defined differently as either amazing content or content with data or you know various machinations based on what your clients' needs were. Uh, and and there are some buyers that believe sports is the only place for premium content because it is so live. No, I think you said, yeah, I think you summed it up nicely. I, I, I think when we think of premium specifically from the agency side, and, and uh, this came out in a lot of the comments, um, there was this feeling that you know, uh, you know, it's not just about broadcast, and I, it's not just all about the, the kind of the, the cable content, but you know, really getting really structured in the sense of how we think about programmatic and audiences and um, some of the some of the evolution we do on that side. You know, there's just as much. Um, excitement, I would say, on, on that on that end, as there is, uh, is some of the some of the premium content that we've we've been talking about for, for years and years. So, the the third area, next slide, please, is kind of the notion of upfronts and new fronts, and there still seems to be varying opinions on this as the world evolves, and and that is that um, sellers like it in part because it's an existing ecosystem, uh, but the digital uh, thoughts of today are that you know do you do you can you buy a year in advance and these are questions that have been around for for, for many years uh, and you can see the benefits are on one hand efficiency or scarcity in certain cases whereas uh, on the other side the digital buyers don't believe that the scarcity is 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 what um, you know is often thought of and uh, we don't have a model and so the question is um, 
you know, what should this be? How does it evolve? This is a, a, a hot area that is evolving over time, and one of the groups will get to address that. Yeah, I was really excited too to um, see some of the results. I, the, is, and I was excited to hear the, the final front come up this morning too with what, with what OMD was trying to pull off. Because I think when, when we think of creating a, a mechanism or a model outside of the upfront, you know, what the new front did, what the final front started to kind of build on, um, it, was, it was really interesting to see there is, there is, there is a little bit more um, um, excitement around that piece of it. So while we do still see the, the, the kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum in the sense of overall sentiment about how we're buying in, in, in any sort of upfront fashion, um, I think there is some excitement there, and I think that, that that's clearly going to come out over, over time as more of these new models start to develop. And then the last slide, please, is everyone's favorite topic, and that's measurement and data. And, and the, the, the conclusion that we have um, is, is that there is a uh, belief, we think, from, from uh, the agency side particularly, um, and, and Michael can speak to it, that is there too much faith in, in the current measurement, sellers are trying to grapple with the evolution of measurement across multi-platforms, but this is something that is important as we move to a world of messages uh, across all kinds of, uh, of platforms, whether they be mobile, VOD, uh, tablet, desktop, etc. And um, so, so this is a topic that, you know, we deliberately um, you know, have, we have this in here, but it's one that could be, you know, the subject of an entire conference. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's funny. Every single um, answer and every single response came back uh, with, with some mention of Nielsen and Comscore basically figuring this out. And I think that fundamentally what we're saying is that, that you know, that, that maybe we're putting too much faith in, in that and there has to be, there has to be a, a, a bigger consideration set of how we're, how we're going to start to answer some of these questions. And I think um, the, the, the tables that are focused on that, I think that's, that's kind of the key is to not focus in on, on, on traditionally how we've done things, but, to, but really have a, a, a more engaging conversation around what is, is there a different way to think about it and how, how do we start to evolve that. So these are the four topics. Let's look at the questions that, that we hope to resolve. And what you'll see here is that we've noted uh, each table has a particular question. And what we'd like you to do is you'll have about 20 minutes to have a discussion, appoint, if not appointed, a um, a leader for the table, and we will go around the room and just get the top point from, from each table on the subject. The first one is clearly premium videos in the eye of the beholder. What should the criteria be for premium video? Uh, two, upfronts, what is success for sellers and what is success for buyers? And, and we can address the concept of you know, the various attempts to um, evolve the, the, the upfront new front, et cetera. Yeah, the third is, is there something we should take responsibility for um, around measurement and data? And just as I was saying, I, you know, I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, momentum, I think, behind you know, thinking Nielsen and Comscore are going are gonna to get the job done. But if, if that's not the case, you know, what, or, or not entirely the case, so there are other ways to think about this, um, having, a, having, a, having a conversation or having some ideas that kind of um, may pop out of that, and, and ultimately, who takes responsibility for what? Because I think that is also um, some of the some of the interaction and some of the, the conversation we think uh, will will come around. You know, what is what what are the content creators responsible for? What are agencies building, um, and, and who kind of takes responsibility for what pieces of those things? Um, and then ultimately, four, which we, we think is really the the, the one that kind of captures, I think, a lot of of of, uh, of of what we've talked about the last couple of days is how do you plan buy and sell. Uh, for a platform agnostic, agnostic video approach. And so the idea being uh, we break down all the walls and we look at it as one big video bucket as we you know, move into uh, the next uh, you know, 2014 planning season or whatever it might be, um, what, are, what are the considerations on both sides of the table from a, from a buyer and a seller um, in the sense of how we can actually ultimately get, get the job done um, and start to break down some of those barriers between TV. So let's um, put the house lights on. So we have 20 minutes and again, Let's have discussion on each of these topics, and then we will uh, we will regroup. Uh, regroup. Our time is up. So do we have the mics? Looks like he's, yeah, he's got them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with tables one. Let's 
good. People just want to keep good, talking. Yeah, good topic. Uh, Everybody, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to. Uh, we have uh, 25 minutes left. We're we're running a clock here, so we stay on <laughs> schedule. And we're going to do one minute um, per table or less to try to just get the, the the key point. And then we're going to record the comments. And then everyone who's here today um, will receive a copy of. The, the, the group answers. So why don't we start um, with right here. Start three. Yeah. Table three. Stand up, say your name. Hi, I'm uh, Brad Siv. I'm with ESPN. Um, thank you. So we, um, as we see, we're looking at the first question. And we came up with really five different um, things that we think that kind of make premium content. One, it's engaging and it spurns action. Um, the second is live sports. I work for ESPN, so I had to say that. Um, <laughs> and uh, Jim O'Donnell's here, so there's some Hulu plugs as well. Um, um, that works for us, too. <laughs> thank you. Uh, professionally produced, um, high production quality. That's, that's a must. Um, and then brand safe is extremely important as well, to make sure your brand's safe in that content and it's a fit. And then also targeted. Um, targeted to your brand and kind of your brand attributes as well. Thank you. Thank you. The next, next table. Hi, Andrew Snyder from Yahoo. We had a great discussion. We covered a lot of the same topics or some of the same ground that these guys did. But one of the things that we discussed was that defining premium as a single word was too limiting. That within the context of premium, different brands have different objectives mm -hmm. and each the criteria for each campaign are different. So just trying to define premium is virtually impossible. But the only way that we really thought we could get at the definition was by breaking it down into four different buckets. So that premium was defined as premium sites, mm -hmm. premium context and or association within those sites, premium targeting and or audiences, and premium video content itself. And then once you sort of break it down into those different categories, then you can start to approach a definition of what premium really means. And I think a lot of the things then that these guys talked about feeds into that overall structure. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Next table. Hi, I'm Becky Graham with AAA. Um, we sort of broke our, ours down into four key criteria. We thought first uh, the most important element was that it's really relevant to the consumer or the target audience. Second, we thought it really needed to be authentic to the brand. Third, it has to be accessible to consumers. It's easily accessible so they can get it wherever and whenever they want to. Four, we thought scalability was important as well, that it can be, um, you know, the, expand the reach of the of the video. And then five, we didn't think it was as much about the production because really we think production value really is in the eye of the beholder. Thanks. Last group. This, I believe these guys, you had question two, correct? Oh, you're on question okay. two. So, so 13 criteria, yep. first three tables. Let's go to question two. What is success for sellers and buyers? I'm Joe Germscheid with Carmichael Lynch uh, Advertising, and we, we kind of define success um, for buyers and sellers as a shared risk and reward between both those buyers and sellers. <clears throat> because the, you know, if you're going to do a content deal, it, it, it's different than doing a spots and dots deal, right? And so the new fronts are the, and we'll just call them the fronts, right? So the fronts are, are great for learning about content, but if you're just going to be buying spots and dots and inventory and impressions, we really don't need the fronts. So, so I don't think that they're a waste of time. The new fronts or the upfronts are a waste of time. It's good for learning about the new content. Um, and the most success you're going to have is when you can actually you know, utilize that learning to, to do well for your clients. And so a shared risk and Thank okay, you. table seven. Hi, I'm Dina Marovich. I'm from Paramount. 
And um, our group talked about what is success for the sellers, and success would be obviously the predictability of revenue um, as much as we can these days, and just securing more revenue up front. And for the buyers, um, it's kind of securing that premium inventory, be it TV or online, at an advantageous price, and also just having the ability to have more strategic conversations with your agencies and with your partners up front about your initiatives for the coming year and starting those strategic conversations early on. And then we discussed the new front, and it's valuable for a certain um, group of publishers, more that have the premium content and then the content to showcase, but it's not as valuable for a video, say like video networks or things like that, where they could just sell their inventory throughout the year, and it's not much about securing those key um, inventory availabilities. And then, you know, from a buyer standpoint, I think it's kind of the same thing for the upfront, where it's advantageous if you're if you want to secure that premium inventory, but not so advantageous if you just want to, um, you know, buy your, you know, regular media throughout the year on video networks or what have you, and you don't really need to um, worry about the new friends as much. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Table eight. Uh, Adam Gerber with ABC, and um, we have a, someone from NBC and ABC at this table, so it's probably going to be a biased point of view on the upfronts. Um, <laughs> so, uh, no, I think it's uh, repetitive to what uh, the other two tables have, have already said. I think, you know, the way we frame the benefits for both buyers and sellers is kind of around two things predictability um, and risk mitigation. So I, I think those are the two critical things that people think about both when they're trying to manage their inventory and sell it and also when they're thinking from the buy side about how to allocate over the course of a long period of time. Um, so I think those things don't go away, especially um, as you think about the premium tier of the marketplace. You know, the new fronts as we talked about it at the table um, were kind of this conundrum for us because it seems like the new fronts were created to try to shift money out of television um, to, to the digital properties, but they were based on a marketplace that was highly liquid, that didn't really need to have um, an upfront type of model um, along the lines of what you heard the other tables talk about. So I, I think where we netted out in terms of the future is you know we had a good conversation about how data and automation and targeting are gonna change how we think about the upfront and that ultimately the upfront is going to be about great content wherever it lives that is scarce, that attracts audiences that are highly desirable, and that, that buyers and sellers are going to want to continue to have that risk aversion and, and predictability built into that tier of the marketplace, mm -hmm. but that the highly liquid part of the marketplace, the spots and dots, is, as I think someone called it, will be best served by just working on a scatter type of real-time basis. Great. great. Table nine. Hello, good morning. Um, table nine, good group of folks here. I won't add on to too much. Other folks have some good points. I think what we looked at from a buyer's perspective, as we said, if the new fronts are going to be important, there has to be a, a focus on scarcity that plays a key role. Why do you buy the inventory at that time? And I think one key point we walked away, walked away from our conversation with is there isn't a lot of scarcity around a lot of the new front content. It's great content, it's quality, it's premium, but it's not scarce, so why do you do it? And one key thing we walked away from, walked, walked away from the conversation with was you, you, you want to try to create a new conversation with missed customers. That's where you really are going to gain an advantage. A lot of this content is going to help you reach younger consumers, hard to reach consumers, folks that many traditional brands probably aren't reaching through their traditional platform. So this is going to be a method for you to do that, and it does make sense. Another approach is most brands are trying to move their, their marketing dollars towards a video agnostic approach. And we think if you're moving the dollars at the same time, that'll give you an opportun opportunity to actually do that. So now you look at eyeballs, impressions, delivery across multiple uh, platforms and environments versus just television. From a buyer, a, a seller perspective, much of what the group mentioned, so I won't add too much there, but I, I think if there's anything I can add there that would be new, um, it, it would probably just be, um, you know, an opportunity for the, the new and up and coming content partners to play a bigger role within this upfront conversation to get their content out there and create some credibility. That's about it. Perfect. Thank you. Let's jump to the third question. Number 12. 
table 12. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, guys. Chris Younger, Eisenberg Group. Uh, the table here, we had folks from Horizon and Taco Bell uh, talking about uh, the nebulous question of data. So all right up front, Nielsen and Comscore, I think one of the things we were talking about was the directional use of that data and informing where to go with how to account for our clients' uh, performance. And then looking at the measurement aspect. Are we measuring brand lift or are we measuring sales, right? Two dramatic, dramatic buckets. So from a brand standpoint, with looking at Nielsen and Comscore, what, what studies can we run against that, right? Are we backing that up? Uh, we talked at Horizon, talking about how they can do brand studies uh, affecting measurement to show that the utilization of your placements can be effective. Or from a sales standpoint, I work a lot on the gaming side. Um, we look at uh, cost per install or cost per acquisition and then re regression modeling and reverse engineering how you actually look at your, your video placement and how that video placement stacks up with all your other media vehicles. At Taco Bell, um, the gal here runs the content side of, of development. Um, so how does that content be calculated in measuring not only brand, but earn media value? Um, the calculation sense of data is measured by the goal by which the brand has to assign. So really tough, right off the bat, really tough question to answer. But with that, each one has its own unique case about how you put value of measuring data to generate performance established by a client. Is it a brand side with Horizon's discussion? Is it a content evaluation side as it relates to, say, Taco Bell's discussion that's measuring draw of sales? So sorry, I don't have a super clear, slick one there, but that's where we kind of got to here in the time we spent. So it was a shared responsibility. It's kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah it's, 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 it's mighty. Great. Thank but I'm you. gonna pass it to table number 13, who's got the right answer. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Fred Sattler with Initiative. Um, what we identified were about a couple or three uh, premises. One is, is that there's a common interest with the sellers in this room and the television cable networks. With their fluidity measures, they have similar kinds of audiences that are um, out there on mobile devices, out of home. Um, so it's time for everybody to come together and find a common currency. The, the second thing we identified is a common currency is needed. Everybody needs to come out of their corners of exceptionalism because we have a common currency in television and we all lay our own values on, you know, high clutter, bad day parts. That's up to us on the other side you know, to determine what we do. But uh, common ground is desperately needed. Um, the other thing uh, that we identified is that this has to be a seller paid um, enterprise. Uh, that uh, between the uh, broadcasters, the digital video distributors, uh, you need to find a way to pool your money to get us the measurement. Um, and similar to other media, uh, you need to pick up the cost in order to do this. When I go to the market, I don't have to bring my own scale. So, you know, similarly, we're looking at the selling community to help fund the measurement. I like that. And uh, lastly, it's, uh, we all have different objectives. We have people at the table who are about clicks and calls. We have other people about moving brand measures. And we can't get seized up in all of our, you know, differing needs and objectives. That's something that we do within our own companies for our own clients. And uh, the, the attempt by a lot of people to try to sell their exceptionalism to sell these needs just has us seized up and not moving forward. So uh, let's, let's get a common denominator and move on with it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll think of you when I go to the grocery with my scale next time. <laughs> Well, thank you, Table 12 and uh, Table 13. We also have the hard question. I'm Rob Chip with Pixability. With all due respect, we're going to thoroughly disagree with what you just said. Um, we think a common currency is a pipe dream at this time. And I think a lot of the dialogue around here is let's go find a common currency, let's make stuff happen. We talked about perhaps there could be a tool set we could, you could plug in to get that common currency. I mean, we really debated this. But the answer ultimately, ultimately was no. So the reality is we're dealing with, when you look at Nielsen and Comscore, you're dealing with platforms that have had decades to evolve and to get fairly stable. You know, dealing with different types, you know, dealing with a different medium. Now we're dealing with the digital world. And for those of you who are dealing with YouTube and things like that, 
it changes on a daily basis. It's dynamic. So it has to be measured differently. So our conclusion was, look, you gotta suck it up in the short term. You gotta measure each medium differently. Okay, measure them in their own rights. Okay, don't try to want to have one size fits all because it won't work and you're gonna frustrate everybody. For the time being, measure, you know, measure television the way it should be measured, measure digital the way it should be measured over time things will evolve. So, you know, I think it's up to, you know, we had buyers, sellers, agencies, and, and some of us who, uh, you know, speak only digital. But the reality is it's important, and the takeaway is stop trying to make something fit that's not ready yet. Okay, just deal with it, customize it, but don't overcomplicate it. Thank you. Is there anyone? Yeah. Does 15 have yeah, anything? Uh, we do. We do should we just skip into the fourth question? Okay. Yeah, I, let's jump into the... Let's, let's go, let's, let's jump right into um, number four. Because I think, uh, it's, it, I, I was just told that a lot of the tables in the back actually covered that one. So uh, let's go to 16 first, and then we'll, we'll jump around a little bit. We have a distinguished member we of do. the online community <laughs> there. Um, gentlemen. Um, so that, that, that whole scale thing, I think you wrote that down, didn't you, Michael? The, uh, the, the scale at the market? Yeah, I, I saw you take that note. Yeah. You're going to use that one in the future. <laughs> All right, so uh, number four, uh, we had some terrific uh, discussion around it. In fact, we probably could have spent uh, another hour or two or the better part of the afternoon. Um, platform agnos agnosticity. I think we came up with a word, too. So, in fact, there can be. Uh, we feel that there can be, in fact, a, an agnostic approach. However, um, much like uh, Dave Smith's quote of the legend that, uh, that passed away about uh, a week ago, uh, we found that there are different, uh, there, there is platform agnosticity, except for that there are different needs and different capabilities for the different screens. So it is not, in fact, one, one screen fits all. Um, and in particular, that there are different uh, audience cues. Uh, and uh, where it really gets difficult, where it really gets dicey, is uh, the, the topic that we've all struggled with over the last couple of days, which is measurement. Mm -hmm. um, that there are so many, that, that measurement is so inconsistent um, that it continues to get convoluted when you work across the different capabilities for the different screens. So again, there is a call for, we've all got to get on the same page when it comes to measurement. Great. Great. Let's jump to uh, um, table 18. All right. Oh, I didn't, well, we're gonna have to jump around. Hi, Melissa Shanky from Target. Um, so we talked a lot about the role of platform agnostic, video planning and buying, and sort of bringing together the challenges within measurement and kind of in some cases, in like the case of McDonald's, trying to back into GRPs to help not only educate the, the non-media people that you need to work with and get your budgets approved with, um, but to really focus back on what you know about consumption and what is the consumer doing, how are they using individual platforms uniquely to inform how you need to build content across and, and understanding the nuances depending on is it live viewing, is it um, a utility-based type message and really thinking about that context. So that's what drove a lot of it, um, trying to land in an area of measurement that can acknowledge the reach and frequency that drives the way we buy to build your base and then ensure flexibility to allow the contextual and the, audi the audience inputs to really round out your total strategy. Thank you. Um, let's, jump to, uh, let's jump to 20. I'm Scott, I'm from SET. Uh, we had a mix of buyers and sellers at this table. Um, and we came up with a uh, more of a systematic approach of a three-step process of how we would plan for a cross-platform strategy. Um, main, main issue, um, identifying um, you know, the, the, the challenge being that, you know, how do you identify a goal that can be tracked and measured across platforms? So what we think the uh, number one step is to build a cross-platform strategy with an integrated team and you know, identify first your target audience's viewing behavior. 
and your key KPIs that you want to measure across platforms and what's realistic to measure across platforms. And we think uh, communication at that step is the most important, the more, most important um, issue. Um, and then identify the message and establish those commonalities across platforms to plan media focus, you know, if it, is it around reach and frequency. Um, and then, simple, optimize against placements based on performance and not platform. That's great, thank you. Uh, let's go 21 and then we'll, we'll open it up and see if there's any other tables that had anything unique that they want to bring up on top of any of those points. I'm Jenny Gardner from Unilever. Anyone who attended boot camp knows how hard it was for me to just stand up right now <laughs> and sit back down. We actually went with number one um, and we really didn't solve the question because our biggest question to ourselves was why are we trying to define premium video? Is it qualitative factors that are going to be very different for different people? Or is it going to be about looking to develop a pricing model? So we kind of started with that kind of a conversation. And then where we netted out was if we kept it very simple to look across all forums and platforms. If you look at audience size and numbers as defining premium, it's very difficult to do outside of TV. Because TV, with the upfronts, you can somewhat estimate what programs are going to deliver ratings. There might be a sleeper hit. Um, but there's sort of a methodology there. In the digital space, it's very difficult to do because how do you project audiences moving forward? And one topic I think that's been discussed in a lot of the sessions too is sometimes there's a lot of support behind digital video and sometimes they're not. So there could be plenty of digital video hits out there that aren't getting marketing support that should have better eyeballs against it, and they don't. So that's sort of where we netted out in our conversation. Thank you. Perfect. Um, do we do, do what should we do? Is, any more? Other? Is there any other tables in the back that have any other perspectives? Yes, yeah, right let's go straight back. 25. Hi, Scott Wensman from Team One. Uh, we focused on question four and a couple new points to just add to the conversation. Is we talked about uh, a lot about the uh, alignment of planners, buyers, and sellers and the accelerated move to. Um, a singular video team within the planning and the or the buying and the and the sales side. So, we we think that's good progress, uh, and look for that to continue um, as traditional broadcast planners buyers merge with the sort of pure play digital folks. The thing that is missing clearly from all of the table conversations is this sort of singular currency. Uh, so we had a, spent a lot of our time discussing that and this idea of a singular transactional currency with audience guarantees and accurate measurement. And it doesn't feel like we're too far away from that, that right now. Uh, so that was uh, the sort of key point that uh, uh, we were focusing on. And once that baseline is laid in, it frees up buyers, sellers, uh, and the like to spend time on the creative opportunity and exploring all of the unique custom formats that are available in the digital, uh, digital environment. Any other Any? group? So we have a, what, what's clear is that there's a lot of ways to, to um, address our, the key questions. And I think that, I, I think they covered everything. Yeah, I think it's, I, 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 yeah, I appreciate the, 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 the tables and, and the, and the uh, conversations just happened. I think, you know, fundamentally what we wanted to get out of this was really um, some takeaways that we actually start to build some of, some, some of this um, as, a, as an actual next step. And I think that, you know, even just the sum, you know, summing together everything you just discussed and, and really thinking about each of these four points, which we think touches on those four sensitive topics that are really going to drive us forward, um, you know, it'll, it'll allow us to kind of communicate back out and, and, and get, some, get some things moving in the right Yes, yeah, so the hope is to send you in a short period of time a summary of the questions and some of the key answers so you can utilize, you know, the results back at home as you tackle these many questions. So thank you thank very you. much.